Hello, my name is Andrew Gary, and welcome to Seismic Sound Off in depth conversations in applied geophysics. In this episode, Dr. Lucy McGregor highlights her 2021 distinguished lecturer talk, Multiphysics Analysis Extracting the Most from Diverse Data Sets. In this incisive conversation, Lucy shows how combining data sets can compensate for weaknesses in each of the data sets, how utilizing gravity data improves the seismic image, what is the biggest obstacle in utilizing diverse data sets, and more. This episode will get you excited to start working with multiple data sets to improve your own results. Dr. Lucy McGregor is a leading researcher in multiphysics analysis with particular expertise in the integration of electromagnetic methods into reservoir characterization workflows. She served as SEG honorary lecturer in Europe in 2011 and co-founded the Edinburgh Geoscience Advisors in 2019. For the full show notes and the link to Lucy's tour, visit seg.org forward slash podcast. And now, our conversation. So the Lucy, the name of your distinguished lecture talk is Multiphysics Analysis, Extracting the Most from Diverse Data Sets. What inspired you to explore combining data sets to better understand the subsurface? So this is an idea I've been working with for really a very long time. In fact, it started as part of my PhD research uh, a very long time ago when we were looking at magmatic systems initially on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And in systems such as that, which have a, a, a kind of structural component, uh, you want to know what a, where a magma chamber is, for example, but also a, a, a property component, a fluid component, where you want to understand how much melt there is in the ridge, for example. Um, it became very clear very quickly that, that using just one method, um, and the most common method is the seismic method, but using just one method doesn't provide you with a complete picture. And in fact, in that example, we used um, electromagnetic methods and seismic methods to, to understand the, the magmatic cyclicity on that ridge. And we went on from there to study a number of hydrothermal systems around the globe. The same principle applies in the oil industry, which is where I've been working for the last, I guess, 15, 20 years or so. Um, and indeed, some of the processes that the, the oil industry uses as standard are inherently multiphysics. I mean, if you think of a, a well log analysis, no one would consider trying to analyze just, just the sonic log. Um, they would always take sonic logs, gamma ray logs, resistivity logs, and put those together to understand rock and fluid properties. Um, really, what we're doing is applying the same principle to geophysical data. Um, use lots of different types of data, and you'll always get a better understanding of the thing you're actually most interested in, which is lithology, fluid properties, geology, things that you can use to understand resources and understand how to, to manage them. So... Please provide just a quick overview of the two main classes of challenges that recent advances in multiphysics analysis have focused on. So the, the, the key to um, multiphysics analysis is, is adding value to a single data type. So what we're looking for is problems where a single type of data doesn't give you all the answers. Um, and as I said, there's, there's kind of two main types of problem or the two common classes of these. Firstly, there are kind of structural properties where, for example, you want to understand structure and stratigraphy to understand geology, uh, but for some reason, reason the seismic method is letting you down. And it usually is seismic data that's used for structural type problems. Um, so the sorts of examples we can think of there are things like um, imaging below very heterogeneous basalt layers. Um, seismic has a hard time penetrating such layers, and you can use electromagnetic methods to condition the seismic analysis in that case. The other class of problem that, that is commonly applied are problems where we want to understand lithology and fluid properties. So they're property type problems. Um, and there what you'll find is that a single data type that measures a, a, a single class of physical property uh, leaves you with an ambiguous answer. And again, taking in a, a range of different geophysical methods that measure different physical properties allows you to understand lithology and fluid more robustly uh, and get a more certain answer. You know, you write in your summary that by quantitatively combining data sets, one can utilize the strengths in one to compensate for weakness in another. Was there a particular combination of data sets that stood out to you that 
ha- that really improved the image when you combined it in this way? Yeah, a really good example of that is improving sensitivity to fluids in the subsurface. Um, if you take seismic data, uh, which many people do, um, and you try and do a quantitative interpretation of particularly fluid properties, there's a very common problem called the fizz gas problem. Um, Now, that arises because to to a seismic data set, to um, acoustic and elastic properties, a very low saturation of gas will look pretty much the same as a much higher commercial saturation of gas. So, taking seismic data by itself, you can't really tell the difference difference between a fizz gas, a low saturation that is sub-commercial, um, and a, a, a higher saturation that would be a, a commercial discovery. And indeed, many expensive and ultimately fruitless wells have been drilled as a result. So this is a, a, a real problem. The same is not true of EM. Uh, a, a low saturation of, of hydrocarbon um, will look completely different from a, a commercial saturation of hydrocarbon if you consider resistivity, which is what electromagnetic methods are sensitive to. Um, so the two cases look very different. And if you take the structural information from seismic data, so essentially you use the seismic data to resolve, if you like, the bucket that the fluid is in, you can then use the electromagnetic data data to uh, look at the saturation and um, understand whether you're looking at subcommercial or commercial hydrocarbon. So it takes both data sets together um, to do a really robust evaluation of, of that, that type of reservoir. Well, you explained well there how EM incorporating that improves the seismic image. Does incorporating gravity data do something similar as well in improving the, the image? Absolutely. And there are some very nice examples of um, improving specifically seismic imaging. So when we're looking at seismic structure by incorporating uh, seismic data, magnetotelluric data, which is natural source electromagnetic data and gravity data, um, there have been good examples, for example, in the, the Barents Sea of imaging around salt bodies, where which is a challenging problem if we take only the seismic data. Um, but by combining that with electromagnetic and gravity data, uh, the seismic image has actually been dramatically improved. What benefits can happen for the geophysicist when she utilizes rock physics-driven multi-physics workflows? Geophysics, I guess, is, is all about characterizing the Earth remotely. We as geophysicists, we go out and measure physical properties. We measure impedances if we're using seismic data or resistivities if we're using electromagnetic data or densities if if you're looking at gravity data and some other things as well. That's actually not what we're interested in. We want to make predictions of geology. We want to characterize resources. Uh, They could be hydrocarbon resources or water resources or mineral resources or other things. Um, And to do that, we want to complete a picture as possible. Um, And we can only do that by combining uh, different physical measurements. Now, each of these different physical measurements um, measures a different property of the Earth, and we need a way of knitting those together. So we need a way of relating a resistivity to a velocity to a density. Um, The best way to do that is through rock physics, because rock physics provides you with a mechanism for linking rock and fluid properties, which are the things you want to know, to the physical properties, velocities, resistivities, densities that you can actually go out and measure. So that link is is critical and and really relies on a, a rock physics bridge. Well, people really uh, enjoy case studies that kind of wrap their head around, you know, what you're talking about in this DL talk. So could you provide a little glimpse of into the case studies that you're going to explore in your talk? Absolutely. I'm working on a number of case studies to illustrate these ideas, um, and I'm hoping to illustrate the ideas across a range of scales and applications. Um, so from very small scale applications, for example, using um, well log data sets themselves, as I said at the beginning, they're inherently multi-physics analyses. Or, for example, mapping relatively local features such as marine massive sulfides using electromagnetic and magnetic data and other things um, through to kind of larger scale applications where we're perhaps uh, working on prospect appraisal. So trying to work out what's in a a reservoir um, or the volume of hydrocarbon 
uh, present uh, prospect ranking in hydrocarbon exploration, and also potentially some large scale mapping problems around the problem of imaging salt or basalt or, or basement uh, within a basin. So across a range of scales, how do these ideas translate? What is the, the biggest obstacle for the geophysicist in utilizing diverse data sets? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, often the biggest barrier uh, to a multi-physics analysis is related to processes within companies and, and people. Um, in order to perform a, a good multi-physics analysis, you need a multidisciplinary team to work on it. And often what we find in the industry is that, that geophysical teams are very siloed. You have the guys who work on seismic imaging, and then you have the guys who work on seismic inversion, and there's another set of people in an, often in another office on another continent who work on well log data. And then the EM guys, they're perhaps sitting in a basement somewhere all by themselves, and they might have some gravity people somewhere in the vicinity. Putting all these people together is key to putting all these disciplines together. You have to have a team of people and specialists who can communicate well with each other, consisting of rock physicists, seismic specialists, inversion gurus, EM experts. Uh, they all need to talk to each other and they need to work closely together to get a good outcome. Uh, sadly, at the moment, not many companies are set up like this. Um, there's still a problem with siloing of disciplines. Um, there are a few, and in fact, more and more people are seeing the benefits of putting these multidisciplinary teams together. And, and where the, the benefit is seen, uh, really great progress is being made. I feel like this could be a pretty wide ranging response here, given uh, the, the multidisciplinary aspect of this talk. But, but who, who do you feel is the ideal audience for your lecture? I'm hoping it will be a lecture that's of interest to a, a wide range of people, um, perhaps from students who just want to learn more about the possibilities that geophysics offers across a range of disciplines, um, to more seasoned practitioners looking for some new ideas or new approaches, perhaps some things that might be helpful to them. And, and what do you hope will be the takeaways for attendees of this lecture? I think the one big one is always think about using multiple methods. Don't rely on a single method to give you all the answers you need. Um, and the, the secondary takeaway would be think about how you tailor your geophysical approach to the problem you have. Don't use the same set of tools just because that's what you have in front of you. Think about what else might be out there that you can apply to perhaps uh, meet your objectives or, or get a less ambiguous result, a, a, a more robust characterization of the subsurface for the purpose that you, you have. So, so please finish this sentence. When this innovative method reaches its full potential, it will open up new opportunities in geophysics and expand our ability to quantify the subsurface and to understand the subsurface. Um, I think the, the goal here is to um, develop applications across many fields where resource evaluation is important to us. Um, a lot of this technology has been developed in hydrocarbon exploration, but that's only one example. Um, there are other examples that are becoming more and more important in many places, for example, water water resource evaluation. Um, onshore water resource evaluation is already done using multi-physics approaches. Um, offshore, we're now beginning to apply the same sorts of ideas and indeed take some of the technology developed in the hydrocarbon industry and transfer it across. Um, another example would be looking at the characterization of geothermal sites, geothermal activity. That's becoming more and more important as we, we transition away from a reliance on hydrocarbon. So I think there are lots of examples where where multi-physics methods really have the opportunity to have quite a big impact on how we look at the Earth. Yeah, you can you can pair this lecture with the December's the leading edge special section on geothermal and then maybe draw some some connections there. Uh, I'd I'd like to I'd love to close with a couple general questions for the audience. You know, what is one piece of advice you would offer someone that would like to succeed in this field? I think really the answer there is to stay curious. Um, and don't be afraid to try things that are new and different. 
And when I first started working in with the electromagnetic methods a long time ago, we were a bit of a curiosity. But now electromagnetics is something that is very widely considered when people are looking at resource evaluation problems. Um, so don't be afraid to try something different, even if you're the only one doing it, because the payoff can be large. And, and lastly here, if, if you could solve just one mystery as a geoscientist, what would you solve? That's a very interesting question. I, I'm, I'm not going to give an, an industry answer. I would go back to some of the work that, that I started with early on in my career, looking at, at magmatic and hydrothermal systems. Um, I think there were a lot of questions then around um, how tectonics works. Effectively, the, the driving force of our planet, how does that work? How does, the, how do, how does tectonics function? How is it driven? What is the effect that that has on the Earth and the, the environment as a whole? Um, I think there's an awful lot of very interesting questions still in that field that it would be really exciting to go back and have another look at. Well, I, I love uh, getting your mind going. Maybe maybe one day you can look to address some of these big questions as you continue to answer other big questions. Thank you for taking time out to, to share a little bit more about what, what you're going to be talking about. No problem. Thanks very much. Thank you for listening to SEG's flagship podcast, Seismic Sound Off. SEG produces these episodes to benefit its members, the geophysics community, and inform the public on the value of the science. To show your support for the show, please share this episode with a friend, colleague, or manager that would enjoy hearing this show. Your recommendation is the single best action you can take on behalf of SEG's podcast. Go to the website at seg.org forward slash podcast to find all the episodes and learn how you can subscribe for free directly on your phone. Original music by Zach Bridges. This episode was hosted, edited, and produced by Andrew Gary at 51 Features. The SEG podcast team is Ted Bakomjian, Jennifer Crockett, Ali McGinnis, and Mick Sweeney. Thank you for listening. This is Seismic Sound Off, signaling off.